Well, hello, hello. How's everyone doing out there? Little talking shit coming at you. The OG show that started it all. The show that started to make other people wonder, um, can I do this? Can I be as good as Alex on? Uh, and then they tried it for two or three weeks and then they fizzled the fuck out. I think a lot of people watch this show and they go, he's just talking. That should be really easy. Do you know how... <laughs> Do you know how difficult it is to multitask everything at one time? You got to have this thing called talent. A lot of you guys don't have it. So if you've tried to do the live stream thing and you suck at it, well, now you know why. It's actually work. A lot of people think that I just come on, don't do any research, don't talk about nothing, and just chit-chat with you motherfuckers. Fuck all that shit. What's up, everybody? Let's say hi to the people here. A lot of stuff happened since uh, in the last like day that I think is worth talking about the show we're going to talk about mainly is supercharger pulley combos and the gas you're going to run mainly like a lot of people are buying moon boost applications and then going, I'm primarily going to be on 93 and I just want to turn it up in the tune, you know, boost. I want to turn up my supercharger output boost via the tune. So that I'm, when I'm ready to race, I can just switch the tune. And that is literally not how it works. That's just not how it works. But we're going to get into that. We're also going to get into some stuff about FTW fuel. That's right. Um, I mentioned on the last show or two shows ago that why did FTW purple go away? Now, I know there is some drama. I know there is some drama. But I don't know the extent of the drama. So I try to steer away from that stuff because I don't want to involve myself in it. I'm just one of those guys that wants that badass fuel back in the market. That's it. It had some nitro in it. A lot of people, not, not like M5, which is like, you know, or M1. It, it was, you know, something that a triple pump system can handle boosted. And uh, a lot of people benefit from it. So the a guy... By the name of Chris Miller from Chris Miller Racing did reply to me on Instagram about that. We'll cover that. We'll also talk about my red car is down to $25,000 again. The guy did not make any money. The flip did not succeed. And I, I, I feel bad. I feel bad. Kind of. Not really. I mean, I feel bad. Look, I thought he was going to buy it to build it. Then it became a thing where, you know, said his dad died, but it, and then you guys need to stop going in on the dude's post and making fun of his dad, you know, because for all I know, he probably passed. Who the fuck knows? But don't go in there doing some dumb shit. But I, his, my name's not on it, but I know that the price was dropped a lot. Um, so now they're asking $25,000, and that's a decent buy for $25,000 if it had the welds on it still. Right now, in my opinion, it's probably worth a solid twenty two. 23. That's pretty much all it's worth in my most humble of opinion. So let's see how do the people here and go from there. Twisted 500 in the house. YouTube corrupt the OG mod. Don't for, don't think I've forgotten YouTube that you are the OG mod here. Good evening all says TJ. Color. Color. Boostly. Fresh pasteles. Street driven GT500. Fresh pastelazo. The pastries have arrived. Uh, DJ said what's up everyone. John Cena. I don't know how I saw him. He is John Cena. Matt 2011 GT, Twisted 500 again, Anton Clean 93, DJ, we got Mendoza's Coyote, Douche Did It, Black Cat 2000 MCR, Street Driven again, uh, uh, Pasteles, and three guys pretty much just go back and forth and do some dumb shit. Rob uh, How or Ho, uh, JD Swag, the other mod, Bill Morrison, uh, Chrome Taint, Fresh Pasteles again, God damn it, y'all just do nothing but just, just bounce shit back and forth. Michael Rodriguez, uh, Godfather, Doom Slayer, Adam, Knock with Suck Dick. How you doing, sir? Try Y Boss, Macho Matt, uh, Benny Cosby. <laughs> now with Suck Dick again. Uh, anyone, anyone need some injectors? FIC 1000s. There you go. He's trying to sell his injectors. Uh, we got Forest Cloud. We got Big Guns, Mendoza's again. Beat Truviate Racing, the resident Beetlejuice. Um, Trent, Evan, Kill Up. 508 polo drinks and a whole bunch of other people. We already got 250 people on. So that's good. So that we're going to talk some shit right away. Okay. Let's start talking about the, the periphery stuff. And then we'll talk about supercharger stuff. And then we'll just talk shit for an hour and a half hanging out with the people. Puro pinche 956. Puro pinche a la verga. Six, a la verga. Oh. 
coming in a little too Take high power. Oh, you're coming a little too high power. So we got this gentleman by the name of Chris Miller Racing. Chris Miller Racing uh, inst on Instagram posted, uh, I think he took out his potato and or his Gen 1 Nokia. I mean, come on. <laughs> and he basically took a video of a video, videoception, um, and he basically uh, – answered my question now listen to the part where i ask a question and then he answers it can somebody explain to me can an ignite representative can a vp person can someone tell me why they can't simply duplicate that exact same formula what is the issue with that so I asked a simple question. What's the issue with that? What is the issue? Wow, people are dropping big money here. Holy shit, I got to get to it. What is going on with FTW Purple? I need answers. Now I know there's drama, but Chris Miller himself, guy's got 40-something thousand followers. He said, someone tag this dude and tell him it's coming back soon. Mod scientist, FTW for the win. Ha ha, Alex. FTW back for the win. Guys, I'd be the first motherfucker in line and I would order four 55 gallon drums of this shit tonight. If it's the exact same formula, guys, my red car went from 770 horsepower to 850 with the same fucking fuel. Same, I'm sorry, with the same boost, same timing. Actually, the fuel system was running out of, uh, out of uh, steam, short trim spiking, but it made almost a hundred more horsepower. And there is a video out there about it somewhere on VMP somewhere hidden, or maybe it's my old video way back in the fucking day. Uh, almost a hundred more horsepower. Obviously he's got some nitro in it, made good power. So I, I don't know the answer. Chris Miller is alluding to the fact that they ain't ready. Oh, it's going to come back. Can't copy paste that. Uh oh, so look, there is obviously some drama surrounding that fuel and i don't know anything about that but i remember every fucking blazing fast car had ftw in it every blazing fast car had ftw purple in it it smelled phenomenal and if mr chris miller is involved with it i don't he might be the maker of the manufacturer i don't know i don't know i think that's going to be, uh, they're going to, it's going to be like a run on the banks. Like people would absolutely say, fuck this fuel, fuck that fuel. FTW purple has become, and I really hate using this word because I think it's severely overused, a legendary fuel. And Matt 2011 GT, yes, you need to change your tune. The stoic is in the eights, if I'm not mistaken. It really stresses out your fuel system. Triple pumps and 285s are going to be flying off of the fucking T1 or TI Automotive or whatever the fuck. Uh, the, the people that make the pumps. 285s and just nonstop because it is gummy. It is nasty. It is powerful. It, it, it requires a lot of fuel system to use it. But nothing performed like that. Now. In naturally aspirated form, I don't really think that it, it was like a massive thing, right? Like it didn't pick up 40 horsepower naturally aspirated. But for whatever reason, when you ran it a little richer, when you ran it a little richer, that son of a bitch loved it. Ask the Luns, ask anyone that ran the stuff. I ran the stuff. Ben Calum ran the stuff. Everyone that's anyone ran the shit back in the day. Then I'm sure there was some fuel drama, like legit Fuel drama. Yeah, that's nuts. 8.1 stoic. Exactly, guys. Pump gas is 14.0 stoic. Sorry. 10% ethanol that you get at the pump is pump gas. 10% ethanol. 14.0 stoic. E85. 985 stoic. So just think about it this way. The lower the number, the more fuel system you'll need. Ethanol, uh, FTW, FTW purple was 8.1 stoic. Stoichiometric air fuel ratio. C16 is 14.7, so it's denser. So you need a lot of fuel system for this shit. But I'm telling you guys, you're going to need a lot of fuel system for this stuff, but it is worth it. It smells phenomenal. It makes you cry while smelling like candy. You can come home from the track 
and it was rid- you're like, man, you smell good. Yeah, I'm FTW, baby. FTW. John Lund in the house gave me a hundo. Boom. Need some cookies, bro. John, they should be coming. I ordered Do oh My God cookies for you guys. It should be coming tomorrow or the following day. John Lund, keep an eye on that stuff because it should be coming your way pretty freaking soon. Daniel Green dropping his big, fat, hairy balls on the chat. Then John Sr. checking in, says, boom, need some cookies, bro. And then we got N.A. Uh, Black Betty gave me uh, five bucks. Can't compete with Poppy or Green or Lund, but glad I'm catching this live. Lund for the win. And uh, V7350 gave me 20 bucks for some channel support. I appreciate you very much. At hashtag FLKA for life. Absolutely. freaking lutely So that happened. FTW stuff happened. I really, really, really would love to get on the... Okay, Youngster says, hey, Alex. Chris Mill is one of the guys who made FTW Fuel. He also has one of the fastest civics in the world. Didn't know that. I apologize. I'm not trying to big time you, Mr. Chris Miller. I don't know who you are, but I'd love to know the story because I know there is going to be some drama stuff because I heard some drama stuff because I think it had to do with Ignite and them and they split. I don't know. I don't know. It's crazy. Uh, but let, let me not get to the question. So let's talk about supercharger size. So we already talked about the red car. It's $25,000 again. So if you guys want to buy yourself my old red car, 25,000 bucks, exactly what I sold it for. It went from 30 to 25. Then we talked about Chris Miller saying that FTW Purple is coming back. So we'll see what's going on with that. Rupi with the $5 and the hello, Becha, how you doing? And uh, oh my God, what is happening? My God, I, I'm getting spammed today. And we're going to talk about supercharger pulleys. Let's get that out of the way because apparently you guys really want to chit chat. Supercharger pulleys. I've had a couple of customers this week. This week, it's already t- Tuesday, that get a very potent supercharger pulley combo. Let's just give an example. Let's say Gen 3, 20% lower. Right there, I know shit's going sideways because I go, okay, we like to dial everything in on pump gas. Because it is a known stoic fuel, 14 So we say pump gas. But when I see it has a 20% lower, I'm going to say, hey, what are your goals with this car? Because even with a four-inch upper on a Whipple Gen 3 car, that's going to make like 13 or 14 pounds of boost. It's going to be a 20% and a 4.0 upper is a lot of steam. So what I usually say is this. Let's get the idle and slow revs out of the way. Okay, look good. Can we just move right to E85? Because I don't expect you going wide open throttle in this vehicle. Then they say, wait a minute. Are you telling me I can't run pump gas in this car? I go, no, sir. You can run pump gas in this car. I do not recommend you race on pump gas or do a lot of wide open throttle hits on pump gas with a 20% lower and a four inch upper. Well, but now I suspect it got sold to him that way. A 10 rib kit, a eight rib kit, usually it's a 10 rib kit, like a Cobra jet 10 rib kit. And you get a 20% lower guys. Understand this. When you get a 20% lower, that pulley chart that you were looking at that, that had determines the upper pulley is gone. Now that now you're pretty much raising everything up by two and a half or three, or maybe four pounds of boost depending on the lower. So let's say you have a pulley on top, like a 375, that makes 10 PSI. Well, once you put a 20% lower, that's 12, 13, in some cases, 14 PSI, depending on how efficient the blower is. Now, if you were in altitude, I'd say, okay, not a problem. 20% lower, four inch upper. He's just trying to make up for the altitude. Let's say if he's in four, five, four or 5,000 feet, I'd say no problem. But in, but in, at sea level, no freaking way. So I've had to tell a couple of customers, Hey, let's move right to 85. He goes, I don't have 85 that available in my area. I do have a return soft fuel system for innovations, dual pump. I get that, but I don't have a lot of 85 in the area. The customer says, well, I say, look, we either get a stock lower in this car or we go right to E85 and limit the hell out of the pump gas tune, maybe even RPM limited because I don't want you blowing up on pump gas. So people people go, okay, they, they, they start, I think it needs to be explained to them that way. Because I think a lot of people think that we can lower boost in the tune. In a supercharged application, guys, hell, even in a turbo application, 
We literally cannot do anything about boost. All we can do is fueling and timing. That's all we can do. We can just mess with fueling and timing. The physical boost getting into your manifold, into your engine, cannot really be changed that much. Maybe if you add timing and the car sees a little more fucking snot, it might make more boost. But in terms of pulley size and what your or your turbo, depending on what spring and boost controller setting you have on there, we don't really control boost. We control the RPM. We control the fuel. We control the spark. So when you have a 20% lower, a four inch upper, and then you suspect that the tuner can lower the boost in the tune, that would be incorrect. Now, can I limit throttle angle? Sure. But you're going to say this thing feels lazy. I'm like, it should feel lazy. We're limiting everything to so this thing doesn't blow up. Those are the same people that go, hey, can I get a valet tune? Can I get a valet tune? Don't you have a second key, sir? Yes, I have a second key. You know you can make that second key a valet key, right? They go, really? Like, yes. So I am kind of um, using this as a an example. For those people out there that immediately buy a supercharger, specifically a supercharger, because with turbos, you just lower boost via the boost controller or don't get a crazy 20-pound spring in the motherfucker and you should be okay. So look at the uh, 305 F-150 says, a 40 20% made 865 wheel on my Gen 3 F-150. That is a lot of boost. That's probably 14 or so PSI, a 40 20%. So a lot of people either get sold this stuff and they say, well, I just want to be, I just want to do it once. So you're saying if we're at 20 feet, 25 PSI and it blows up, it's our fault and the tune can't fix it. That's pretty much what I'm saying, Cuban. And he knows it. He knows exactly the deal. In I cannot manipulate the boost in the tune. Now let's move on over to guys that think that because you build your motor that we can get aggressive on pump gas. Maybe you're a motor builder. Maybe you're a shop. Maybe you think you know what the fuck you're talking about. Just because you have a forged rotating assembly, that doesn't mean detonation. That doesn't prevent detonation from happening. If you have an 11 to 1 or 12 to 1 Coyote that has forged pistons, for, forged everything, super built, and you say, I want to make as much power as I can on pump gas, I'm going to say, I literally cannot prevent detonation because you have rods and pistons in the thing. If you add, give me 25, to, give me 22 degrees of timing. What? Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to put 13 PSI to it. I want 22 degrees. I built this. I know what the fuck I'm doing. Give it to me. And I say, no, I can't, I cannot, a rotating assembly does not, a rotating assembly does not prevent detonation. It's still happening now. Is it going to survive longer because of the forged rotating assembly? Sure. Sure. It is no different than hitting a brick with a five pound sledgehammer, right? You have a brick, you hit it with a sledgehammer, right? And it'll break that brick quickly. Actually, that's not a good example. Let's say, let's say you have something. Actually, no, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. If you have a small hammer, and you're hitting the brick, right? It's let's say it's a forged rotating assembly, and you have a small hammer, and you're hitting that brick. It's going to take a long time for it to break, and that's the only way I can kind of visualize what a forged rotating assembly goes through. Just because it's a small hammer, it's still doing damage to the brick. It's still doing damage to the brick. It's just going to take a longer time for it to break down. That's no different than having a forged rotating assembly with pump gas. Okay, a forged rotating assembly with pump gas will not prevent detonation. Oh my God, shut up. Oh my God, shut up. Turo Vialti is Beetlejuice. On pump gas, guys, you are pretty limited because of the octane. You're pretty limited. 93 octane, the reason there's ethanol in it is because it's an octane booster. They used to do lead. They used to do other things. Ether, what is it? Was it ether, lead, and then uh, um, corn-based ethanol? So you're limited by the octane. Now, people will pull something out of their ass and say, well, Alex, a big block 572 with twin turbos can make a thought. Oh, my God. You mean a big block 
a massive fucking motor with two turbos at it makes a thousand on eight psi and 93 octane goes oh no big deal just do whatever the fuck you want but when you're we're talking coyote here this is a coyote and ford specific channel so a lot of people are building their motors and still thinking that that's going to fix their pump gas issues they literally say well it's built remember ray remember it's built give me the sauce don't you dare skimp on timing i can see the data logs and finally just because you can read data logs does not tell me you can tell me what to do in the tune cool story you can read data logs Alex, the car can take more timing. Why do you say it can take more timing, sir? The knock sensors are still negative. You don't know what the fuck you're looking at. You don't know what the fuck you're looking at. When you look at a data log and it says 26 degrees and then the knock sensors are minus two, do you think that means I can add two more degrees? Is that what you think? Or are the knock sensors adding two to get 26. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Stop reading data logs. Data logs sent. And whatever the tuner tells you is what you should go with. And if you don't like what he tells you, you have other options. You have other options. But to tell me to add more timing on something I know can't take more timing? No. No. When you look at a data log and you say, oh, it's 24 degrees, but the knock sensors are slammed negative six. It wants 30. You need to step away. You need to step away from the fucking Excel spreadsheet, bro. Negative six, 24, 30. Hey, Alex doesn't want to give me 30 degrees because 24 plus 6 is 30. I know how to math. Or is the knock sensor adding 6 to achieve 24? Ooh, fuck. <laughs> oh, give me more timing. So that's what I'm going to start telling people. I'm not going to give you the file. Are you insane, Michael Locks? Give you the file. Give you the file. <laughs> Frank says, but give me the, no, you can buy the pro racer package. You can buy HP tuners. You can buy Motec. You can buy mega squirt. You can buy Holly. You can do it yourself. You're so smart. So guys, if you don't trust the tuner that you're working with, you can go elsewhere. The tuner's job is to make safe, reliable power. It is not the tuner's job to blow your shit up or to do what you ask. I'm paying you good money. Yes, you're paying me good money for all the expertise I know above and beyond what you know so that I have the chops to say, no, it's too much for you. You don't get this. You don't see. My buddy looked at your data log, Alex, and he says it's lean. And I go back and look at the data log. Short term fuel terms are 0.99 and AFR is 0.85. And I'm looking at this data log and I have literally done this many times. I go. What the fuck is that guy looking at that makes him think it's lean? What is that guy looking at in this log that makes him think it's lean? So that he turns around to his friend and says, bro, your tuner's running this shit lean. I am blown away to this day by people that do that. I'm blown away because if you don't have the tune file in front of your face, if you don't have it in front of your face, you don't know You don't know what I'm commanding. Someone said, rough day, Alex. No, not a rough day. This is a culmination of, of, of almost seven years in the industry. This is a culmination because it is 2022 and people are still asking for more timing on pump gas. It is 2022 and people are still asking for more timing on pump gas. And people that I thought knew shit are saying, well, it's built. It's just, just put more timing in. It's built. It's just built. I can't prevent detonation from happening because it's built. Or maybe they got element 115 rods. Huh? 
Maybe y'all got Element 115 rods and Bob Lazar pistons. Uh, did you get the Bob Lazar rotating assembly with Element 115 rods where it magically makes its own gravity and gets rid of detonation before it happens? It bends space-time in the combustion chamber? Stop it. You guys need to stop it. Stop reading logs. If you don't trust your tuner, go somewhere else. Stop looking at... <laughs> Stop telling me shit's built. Stop telling me how to tune. <laughs> you know who you know who can tell me how to tune at Lund Racing? People with the last name of Lund. That's the only person I'm ever going to listen to in my life that will say, Alex, you should do this. Yes, sir. Hey, let me see who signs my checks. Oh, Cheryl and John Lund. Yep. Whatever you say. <laughs> But if Nakwid suck dick is like, Alex, oh, uh, Alex, look. <laughs> we have a lot of holly tuners here, and they keep adding timing. Car make more power. Yeah, it makes a little noise. It's a little rattly, but it makes more power. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is going on? All right, guys, let's talk some shit with you guys, and uh, we'll get your comments, questions, concerns. Talk some shit. Anything y'all want to talk about, it is talking shit. I just like to get about 25 minutes or so out of the way. I did see the parts farm said hello. So I want to get to them because they and uh, the parts farm, thank you for the super sticker. Appreciate you. I see you guys got a lot of fucking cracker pallets going and they're selling rolling chassis. I saw a S197 white rolling chassis and I was like, oh, if I had more money. Oh, so the parts farm in the house, two auto solutions in the house, the two people that make it happen when it comes to sponsorships and the people that get so jealous because these motherfuckers pay me to have their picture up there. Oh, I got motherfuckers so jealous because people pay me to put their logo on my shit. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys very, very much. But, Alex, I got ID2000s and a, and a Sile fuel system. I should be good for... I should be good for 1,500 wheel horsepower on 87. It's built. Just remove the rods. Can take all the timing and weight savings. People think a built motor is bulletproof. Detonation will kill any motor. No, 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 no. Look, look. I'm telling you, like the, the way I felt today, like today was a culmination of like everyone saying the stuff that really, quote unquote, grinds my gears. I was playing hit him up nonstop. Okay. So fuck fucking bitch. That's, that you get him, Tupac. What? You want me to raise timing? Who the fuck do you think you are? Get the fuck out of here, bro. First off, come on, man. Yeah. <laughs> From under my dick. Second shift says, Alex, yesterday when I asked, does higher compression need more or less fuel? Well, I asked our guy, Zach, and he said in his experience, high compression motors need less fuel. Okay. I mean, cool. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what to say to that because I deal in the coyote world. So if you're looking at it in terms of volumetric efficiency, right? So I, I guess you can look at short-term fuel-term data and interpolate what the VE table would be inferring. So let's say I have an 11 to one compression coyote idling with E85, tested, verified E85, chilling, and the fuel trims are plus minus 2%. And on the slow revs, it's plus minus 3%. And on the wide open throttle logs, it's plus minus 3%. When they build it and put a 13 to one in there, it doesn't need fueling changes. And it is not trimming any higher or lower. Now, that might be because the MAF sensor goes off of frequency. The air passing through it, the velocity makes a frequency and the air passing through it dictates how much fuel you should feed the car, basically, for lack of a better word. I'm, I'm giving you guys very general terms. So I would know um, in a measurable sense how much compression dictates how much fuel you need, but... The real answer is this. I don't care. <laughs> like most tuners are eggheads. Most tuners are very smart. Most tuners love data. I'm going to tell you guys, I am way better with your cars than I am with mine because it's my job. My job is to get your cars running as best as possible. My shit's good enough. 
on my personal shit, it's good enough, right? I go, I can't tell the difference in the fucking tune. I can't tell the difference in driving. I don't give a shit if the math curve's a little bumpy. Fuck it. Let's go. Let's send that shit. Drive's good. Go roll out. Now, will my car run better, be more efficient if I gave a fuck? Sure. I do it eight to 10 hours a day. I don't want to do it in my off time. So that's why. Do you know what I'm saying? Mike Rasevic says, Hellion, Hellion Kit says to run breather tubes from the cam covers to the turbo filters if you're staying under 8 to 10 PSI. Have you seen any issues with that or should I just buy dual catch cans? Honestly, I'd buy dual catch cans and forget that shit. The less shit you have going on into the turbos, in my opinion, the better. So just catch can the fucker, put the breathers in a place where you really won't be getting a, a mouthful of exhaust and or whatever crankcase juice and you should be good to go. Did the research and watch the back-to-back -back basic videos and went Gen 1 rounds, 2, 3, 10 PSI, 93 daily driver suggested by John Jr. And you got my tune from, and you got my tune from Dakota and loving the car. There you go, Morris Gallo. The best way to do it, guys, is plan out your build. What do you want to do with the car? I never race it. I don't go racing. I don't give a shit about racing. Okay, I'd like to buy a kit. Uh, let me get a 2.8 upper pulley and a 40% lower and LU47s. <laughs> what the fuck? Do as I say, not as I do. Right. You drive my car, you wouldn't know anything's wrong with it. But then you look at the data, not the data, but, you know, the timing curve could be more linear. The math curve could be smoother. I just want to fucking drive my car. <laughs> I just want to drive my car. That's it. 14 Mustang GT on three times, 76 single on 93, 68 PSI. I kept my exhaust. What's your opinion on that rather than a bumper exit? I prefer a exhaust, but because it's an on three kit, it's going to be subject or prone to back pressure issues. So a lot of people remedy that by getting springs like pack one, two, three, four X's or whatever. Um, honestly, I am never going to do a bumper exit because I'm a grown ass fucking man and I'm not gay. Okay. On a street car, if you're bumper exiting the car and then complaining about exhaust fumes in your fucking face, then you got what you deserve. Let's be grown men here. Bumper exits are for race cars. Oh, no street car. I can drive in Florida. Shut up. Bumper exits are for street cars. The maintenance is easy. You don't really give a fuck. It's in the front. Who cares? But let you be at a light with a bumper exit exhaust idling for a couple of minutes and you die in the fucking driver's seat because of the poison smashing your face. What happened? He died of bumper exit. Oh, that's the fourth one this week. <laughs> let me see. Oh, well, you know, on three kit. Oh, a BL Fab kit with a bet with a fender exit? Dead drivers. <laughs> Morris guy, give me 10 bucks. Thank you, sir. Uh exactly. Never had an issue with my bumper exit exhaust. The exit is facing the passenger side, though. Right. So your passenger is dead. Your passenger's dead. I never had an exit with my bumper exit exhaust. It exits to the passenger side. I love people like that. Rest in peace. Die to bump due to bumper exit. You can either die of a bumper exit or COVID. <laughs> What's wrong? The car's idling at the light. He died. He has a bumper exit, so he's dead. Alex, I might know the answer, but Tupac or Biggie? Biggie, stop it. Lyrically, Biggie. If you're on that culture bullshit, sure, Tupac. Someone get Alex a Snickers stat. <laughs> no, this is guys. The guys that know the channel knows that this is who I am. The guy you see at the track that goes. Hey man, how you? Hey man, how you doing? Nice to meet you. Yeah, I love talking here for free. It's awesome. Yeah, I love talking to you about your LU forty sevens and your flex tune. It's awesome. Oh my god, I fucking love this. This is great. I was born for this. That's the fake motherfucker. <laughs> this is the real me. What about Zubies, Alex? I'd run into the cab of the car so I can hear it better. I can really hear the detonation when it's in my fucking mouth. <laughs> Alex, getting you the base data log for our client's Whipple Coyote car in about 20. Hear back from you at 0600 tomorrow, sir. Hey, PK, give me the logs of that car that came in in a bucket of bolts. PK, shout out to you, man. This guy put up a story in his Instagram today. Some guy delivered his car to his shop in a basically a bucket of bolts. If you guys, if you guys can make a car work with a bucket of bolts, shout out to you. 
Someone dropped off their car to my shop with a bucket of bullets. Get this fucking thing out of here. Get this <laughs> piece of shit out of here. Some of the full exhaust on three kids get false knock. The bumper exits help avoid that. Oh, yeah, sure. Why is it getting false knock, Patrick Lynch? If a kid is constructed properly and routed properly and avoids hitting the body, hitting AC lines, hitting the K member, why would it have false knock? Interesting. Hood exit, kill both driver and passenger. <laughs> Alex, I rerouted my exhaust to see the flames and hear the burbles. I'm dizzy, though. Is it the tune? Xander will wreck three times first. This is regular unleaded, Alex. This isn't high octane. This is not high power, Alex. This Take is this not. Oh, okay, okay. This is normal oh, ass, Alex. You know who saw real Alex? Second shift racing saw real Alex for a second. Speaking of Biggie, what was the Biggie song played the other day? I believe it was on the soundboard. No, there was no Biggie sound. I wish. No, there's no Biggie sound. I got Hit Him Up. I got uh, uh, Boozy. No, I don't have any Biggie on the soundboard. You know, it's bad when the air tastes like knock. I love doing dino days and setting people's cars up on Saturdays for no pay. Oh, how are you guys doing? I'm here at the Fuck Nationals. Yeah, that's the 15th um, rev competition today. I love sitting here and talking to you. Uh, no, I really don't. I really don't. Unless I'm getting paid big money, you, you won't see me dead at that shit. The worst, the worst is being at PRI. PRI, you go there as a presenter and no one gives a fuck about what your product is. They just want the free shit you're giving out. These guys walk around with these bags and they go to every single booth to see what the booth is giving out. So one time we put out shirts so that we can sell them. Motherfuckers just started taking shirts. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. These are for sale. They're like, for sale? And they left. And I'm like, I hate this. I hate, hate. I hate cars. I hate race car people. <laughs> I hate everything. El Coyote, El Coyote, put a put a pinch in that six live. Put a pinch in. Uh, yo, question, Alex. You made a video a year ago or so. Intake cam idle stumble. My nineteen eight ten is doing it. Thirty two thousand miles bone stock. Should I worry or send it and get an eighty five tune to avoid the warranty? Avoid the warranty because there's no known fix for it that I know of. Alex wants to do dinner with you. Hit him up. He just made pay if you have a good relationship with your <sighs> father. My God, gotta love it. <clears throat> What did Mike say? Mike, during World War II, the Germans were first to test routing the exhaust into the back of a truck. Damn. <laughs> How much is gas out in Florida, Alex? We're getting bent over and railed every day. It's close to five bucks for premium and uh, high fours or mid fours for bullshit. Do you need a tune revision when you're going from a 3.6 to a 3.3 pulling on E85 packs? Now, that's a good question, Kale Klein. So when we do idle, slow revs, and wide open throttle pulls, the reason we do that is so we can dial in a couple of things, timing and the math curve. The math curve is basically the, responsible for fueling the car. Now, you don't physically see a math curve because when I say math curve in an email, you look down at the car and you go, oh, that curve? I go, no, it's the air frequency responsible for fueling on the vehicle. If the car is idling, the air frequency is on the 1.2, 1.7, depending on the size of the tube. And it can go as high as to 13 or 14 hertz, I believe. Hertz, I think. Uh, HZ, yeah, hertz. Uh, if I'm mistaken on that, I don't give a fuck because I don't care. Um, and when we do idle slow revs in watt, when we do idle slow revs in watt, we basically sample idle, the middle with the slow revs, and watt is the top. So when you change from a 3.6 pulley to a 3.3 pulley, the only thing that needs adjusting is the top. The middle, the idle wouldn't change. And even if it did change, it already hit another cell that we already took care of in the idle slow rev. Idle slow rev. At wide open throttle, the 3.3 pulley will make more boost. And it might, not will, it might go up a cell or two and need tweaks up there. But 90% of the time, guys, it's slightly on the rich side, maybe two, three percent, and we typically don't have to touch it. So once we do idle slow revs and watt, 
and we say it's good. Typically, it's good up in, until you're moon boosting the thing. You know what I'm saying? How long until Xander blows up the Mach 1 with that ESS blower he got? Who's he getting it tuned by? Who is he getting it tuned by? That's a that's a good one. Yeah. Uh, Pussy Rippers International. Jesus Christ. Uh, you think that's a tune issue or a PCM issue? Pat's deleted and tuned from a reputable Pat's call. I didn't know what. If you didn't put it in one question, I am not going to answer it. Sorry, brother. Love you. Sorry, Mr. Chat. Yesterday on the subject of hero passes, but what do you feel like a good pass would be for a 12? I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. On a 12 to 1, 12 to 5 to 1 compression, ported Gen 2 head, straight cheek, Comcast, EJ. Is it a 6F converter? 6F converter, what's it weigh? You look like a big boy. So if your girlfriend's driving it, it'll probably be way in the 11s. If you're driving it, it's probably going to be a 12 second car or a high 11 second car. Sorry, I'm just being honest. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At what degree of timing do you tell the customer no? You gave me 19 on my Boost in 36 Vortex and the car feels amazing. What more do you need? No. On your car, I can probably go up to 2021, but nothing past that because of your pulley size. 3.6. Now, if you had a 3.47 or a 3.3, I would say, bro, let's leave it at 18, you know, because it's boosting. I don't trust boosting to be as good or reliable or your mixture, because it is you mixing it, uh, to be uh, adequate. So I, I tend to be conservative on that one. Other tuners don't care. They'll give you 23 and send it. And then when you don't have the mixture properly, it detonate and bad shit can happen. Do you know what I'm saying? Too high power is a classic. Uh... <laughs> Alex would have been Calamar States 2 MTV2 hold up for 800 GT. Yeah, I think so. I think that wouldn't be a problem at all. Oh, he's getting tuned by for oh, oh no, he's getting tuned for Lund. Finally, he got some common sense. I didn't hear anything, but it'll be very interesting if I see that name come across our shit. Some guy named De Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that guy talks shit on Lund all the time. This fucking clown, this fucking clown talks shit on Lund all the time. Like that's all he does. He was born to talk shit on Lund. Poor boy in the house. How you doing? Oh, no, he's getting tuned for Lund. Finally got some common sense. I don't think he's getting tuned by Lund. Um, channel support. Thank you, Jimmy Jams. How you doing, brother? Uh, the 956 guys are gay for pay. Wow. Holy shit. Daniel talking all that shit. Trent Katz and Shrapnel. Yes, sorry. He asked me what it would run. I saw his photo. I said, get your girlfriend to drive it. <laughs> what are the main problems you know of in a TR6060? I got a 2012 Shelby GT500. Keying in on synchronizers and shift forks or caliber build one, two shift sucks, reverse sucks, McLeod twin disc and MGW opinions. Well, I would, uh, is it an RXT? The RXT guys, I'm sorry, man. I'm so down on the RXT. It's just made for a tractor in my opinion. But if it's not going into fucking one to on the one, two, more than likely your synchros. I mean, think about it. It's more than likely your synchros that are an issue. I would look at Ben Calamar. He's probably going to say, yeah, your synchros are probably shit. Send it in for a rebuild. He'll get you fixed up, sir. So Michael Locks is obviously really late to the party. And he answers 42 minutes late and says, Chris started FTW fuel. Okay, that's fine. But I want to hear from the horse's mouth. Potential spam, a space engine, bay, uh, Vortex. Uh, yeah, I just some of these questions I just don't want to answer. Derek. Daryl talk shit on Lund. We'll have to unsub because I watch his stuff. Of course he's talk shit on Lund. Name a tuner that doesn't talk shit on Lund. Go. Go. Name a tuner with two O's that doesn't talk shit on Lund. Go. That motherfucker talk shit on Lund all the fucking time. 5 Bird, thank you for the money. Appreciate you. Out here, late out of here, lady guys. Hey, Bondo Bird, thank you very much. And uh, Bondo Bird put up a picture of a five liter Whipple on his Instagram page, and I thought it was hilarious. And I'm like, well, that one might not have belt slip. <laughs> oh my god, ran 10 8 with a 300 pound ass with a stock long block. There you go, then so it'll go faster. I'm look, I'm sorry, man. I'm not one to say, well, I think it'll run 10 50, 10 40 conservatively. At about 130, I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. I'm not that guy. You're not that guy, pal. Trust just me. not that You're guy. You're not that Don't guy. Don't care. The customer's always right. No, sometimes the customer is just an asshole. I'm not going to call him an asshole. I'm just going to say that they 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 really need to understand what they're getting into when you're getting a, a tune. You're basically giving someone that has tested thousands of vehicles and has tuned 
hundred, probably a hundred thousand vehicles. I, I wish I knew how many vehicles Lund tuned in their lifetime, but probably over a hundred thousand. And you're going to question their ability, their know-how, their way of operating. You're going to question what they do. Whoa. I mean, the nerve, the nerve. And if you don't like the service, you can just go elsewhere. You know, I'm not saying to leave. I'm just saying, we know what's best for your car. We know what's best for your car. But if you're so stubborn that you want me to do something that I know will hurt your car in the long run, and I say no because I'm looking out for your car, you can go somewhere else because I'm not going to purposely hurt your car because of your ignorance. It's just not going to happen. I ordered a 3.4 pulley for Gen 3 V3 running 85. Is that the same as a 3.47? I think so. I think so. I'm not 100%. Uh, that's Vortec. Thanks for hooking up with the cookies the other day. Got a YDBT on the way. Thank you, Trevor. Thank you. Appreciate that. Those play, th those people are taking off. Did you see that Tommy Lauren posted a picture with my cookie? She ordered cookies from Oh My God Cookies, and she had a YDBT cookie. And baby, you see how thick that cookie is? It's thicker. Hit a brother up. You got that beta over there. Um, I'm a buddy of El Coyote. Tell this man to quit debating the tune and send it. He's tired of seeing my boosted F-150s taillights. What do you want me to say? What do you want me to say? I had a customer um, from the Tampa area. He said, look, I got a guy who's got my same vehicle, 2020 CJ A10. I go, sir, you have the same tune. What? Yeah, we have one tune for that. The difference is injectors, performance package, or cold air. But the base file is similar. And he goes, ah, fuck. I go, right. So the apples to apples is there. The base file to base file to, to year vehicle is right there. And if he is half a second faster than you, it's not the tune. If you don't have haters, you're doing it wrong. Eh, yeah, I don't care about the hater stuff. You know what I mean? True Poppy says, I missed my I missed his paid chat. I apologize. Where are you? Watch it be this astronomical thing. He must have said something so astronomical, so funny. Check this out, Alex. Can I get a too high power? Ah, oh, he paid. Check this out. Oh, you're okay, coming a little too high oh. power. Oh, gotta love it. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. My God, this, this chat is lit as fuck today. Uh, Apache Production says, would a 14 GT 500 gauge cluster work in a 14 GT? Thanks. I don't know. What are you looking to do? Add the boost gauge? Uh, what are you looking to do? Uh, the mile an hour? Like the mile an hour? Maybe. I mean, I don't see why not. If it's a 14 to a 14, I don't see why not. But certain gauges won't work like the boost gauge. <laughs> imagine, imagine if he tries to get it that <laughs> to work. Uh, Alex, can you turn on the switch for the boost gauge on my cluster swap 14 GT? Oh, oh, like the guys that put performance pack gauges in a non-performance pack. What are you looking at? Your vacuum? Oh, look, my vacuum. <laughs> your oil pressure? You really want those two gauges up there to look at your vacuum? And then you start going, hey, is my vacuum reading proper? Is my oil reading proper? And I got to go in there in the tune and try to make, just flip on some switches so the shit could work. And you're like, yeah, yo, I think my oil pressure is wrong. I think my vacuum is wrong. Oh, bro, 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 bro. Uh, did you know what max level boost is on a 2650 blower? Well, if you stuff bananas in the tailpipe, 30 at least, 35. Like, how much boost can you get out of any blower if you stuff enough bananas in the tailpipe? <laughs> uh, Alex, where's the best place to go plug in? Uh, where's, <laughs> where's the best place to plug in for a boost gauge? If you have a return style fuel system, you can T into that reference or some manifold source. Anywhere. In the <laughs> somewhere in the manifold. Behind the throttle body, preferably. <laughs> Ah, shit. It's a 6 or 80 and a 2017 F-150, same as a Mustang internally, and can it hold 700 rear row horsepower reliably? Race red 5.0. The transmission that is in the red car that I sold is a Gen 2 F-150 transmission. So when he states it has extra clutches, I'm like, no, it doesn't. No, it doesn't, sir. Oh, my God. He's a customer. Clap for us, monkey. What the fuck, people, right? You got to love it. Uh, Chupapi, I appreciate you, sir. <laughs> Coca-Cola, the best, the best 
owns the best car ever. Roush Gen 3 car. Badass shit. Badass. The baddest thing on the... Mexico recently put a pinch in 956 a la verga. Cut. Put a pinch in 956 <laughs> a la verga. Oh, Cut. Tony Blink if Alex has you hostage. Where is Tony? Tony, where are you? Bro, he's sleeping. Homeboy's sleeping. Bro, glow shift narrow band gauge looks sick as fuck. What is happening? What is happening? What is happening? The 6-2 on our 2020 F350 box truck is the bee's knees with those four tens. Oh, my God. What is happening? We're not going to go fall for the banana in the tailpipe. Like when people say boost to me, I am blown away by that. I'm just, I'm just like blown away. How much boost can a 2650 make? 30? You can theoretically make as much boost as you want. You can make as much boost as you want until the valves start to float, you know? But I think what he means is what's the max pulley what what's the max boost i can make the, a better question would be what's the max boost i can make on this pulley combo if you have if you have 2 inch headers boost is going to be different than if you had 1 and a half inch headers and that really confuses people that's the one that really gets people they're going to go wait a minute what i'm going to say if you have a 1 and a half inch header you might make less boost with a 2 inch header but make more power and that's when the math happens in their head they go what I go, yep, exactly. Today is a hands full of feels peasant chat. If you add race oil to your coyote, you gain 30 horsepower. Alex, can you use can my Harbor Freight air compressor to boost my car? You think 90 PSI is good? Did you guys watch the Hoonigan channel where they put four, four fans on like a Trans Am or something? Like on a Trans Am. And I'm like, who watches this? You know what? A lot of you motherfuckers watch that shit. A ton of you motherfuckers watch that shit. And I just like turn it off immediately. Like I immediately turn that. I'm like, uh, maybe, maybe I'm old. Maybe I'm old. Maybe, maybe, maybe it, I've hit my limit. Who knows? It's a measure of restriction. Exactly. Boost is a measure of restriction. So just because you have more boost does not mean you make more power. That. Uh, and people are amazed when you hear, like, if you have a turbo car and you go, all right, I'm at 40 PSI and it made 1,500. Now let me add four more pounds of boost. Hey, it made 1,500, 1,502. And it made a little bit more torque. I wonder why. You wonder why. If you can comment on a live chat, you can like the video. Come on, guys. Let's make Alex's day. He gives us the evening every day. I try to. It's just a six-foot leaf floor on the Miata. Of course he did. But you guys watched it. Uh, I run 32 PSI uh, boost on my built Eclipse on C16 fuel turbo. <laughs> same reason the two valve can make the same torque as a Coyote, but with 100 less horsepower. Exactly. Um, so, Alex, did they ever make a Fairmont wagon? No, but they did make a Ranchero style thing. But I don't think they made a Fairmont wagon. They made an LTD, I think, wagon. But they did not make a Fairmont wagon. But they did make a Ranchero style Fairmont, uh, Fairmont. It was, I mean, if I, if I put, if I put truck, it, it, you should get a picture. There's a guy that has a really, really fast one out there, but the Ford Durango is what they called it. Yeah. They called it the Ford Durango back in the day. And, uh, it's really fucking gross and ugly and I would never recommend buying it. It's really fucking disgusting. And here you go. Here's a Ford Durango right there. Basically a Fairmont with a bed disgusting ugly stupid rare weird but it is a fox body it is a fox body so if you like the weird fox bodies that's your jam right there bro um alex uh can you get me a tune to run my shelby on but okay stop it stop it leave it to beaner stop it stop it you're not the most dangerous person in the room uh maybe you were in uh 1999 uh it's over uh go fuck dead bodies in a morgue <laughs> i love him he's the best they did make a Fairmont station wagon. Show me. Show me a Fairmont station wagon. Let me see. Ford, Ford Fairmont station wagon. Let's see. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. But God damn it. God damn it. That. <laughs> Holy shit. What a piece of junk. Oh, my God. This. <laughs> you wouldn't catch me dead. People would think this is cool. This is gay as fuck. Come on, man. If you went out of your way to build one of these, man, I'm sorry for you, man. This thing's a fucking piece of trash, bro. Oh, what a what a hunk of shit. Could you are you kidding me? Are you kidding? <laughs> if 
look at this ugly piece. Oh my God. Oh, there it is. That's the one I was looking for. That's the front end that I was looking for. Oh my God. Yeah. I'm sorry. I stand corrected. Uh, they did make a Fairmount wagon and it's gay. Really fucking gay. Some guy put drag lights on it. Wow. I can't, I can't, I don't care. Leave to me will pull this cock out on you. Wait, mean Glock. I mean, my 70, I love my 78 Fairmount wagon. Good for you. What gauges would be important for boost AFR and fuel pressure? What gauges would be important for boost AFR and fuel pressure. Why do you want to see AFR? Look, if you have a coyote car and you're wide open throttle, and by the time you see AFR being an issue, that shit's already blowed up. Because let's think about this. The short-term fuel trims can adjust 30%. 30% up and down, and AFR will not be affected. AFR will not be affected. You can literally have a car that, well, I wouldn't say affected, but it won't be affected that bad. By the time in a Coyote car, you see AFR start to spike lean. That means the short trims fucking flattened out a long time ago. It's already eating itself. So I would definitely say something like short-term fuel trims. But the problem is once you start to see, you're not going to be going 130 miles an hour or more and look down and see what your short trims are doing. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of one of those things that you can't really catch. It just kind of happens. If you're trying to monitor stuff, like a lot of people that monitor AFR, the moment you go from a pump gas tune to a E85 tune, they freak out. Guys, do you know how many guys go from a pump gas tune and they stare down their AFR gauge at idle. It says 14. Oh, then here you go, sir. Fill up with the 85 and load this tune. Oh, it's rich as fuck. It's 10.0. What's Alex, Alex, this tune is fucked up. It's really rich. It's really rich. You need to do something. Why? My AFR is 10.0. Well, your data log says the trims are within 3% long and short. And land does 1-0. But my AFR gauge says it's 10-0. It's rich. Fix it. I don't believe you. What do you do if they stare down the AFR gauge like if it matters? It doesn't matter. That's a dummy gauge. That gauge is as good as the boost gauge on a GT500. It's trash. It's inferred shit. <laughs> Stop looking at it. Lewis Lara says, is drivability worse on a CJ compared to a boss manifold? I was thinking about switching to a CJ, but somebody I know with one tuned by someone else says that it drives weird and randomly turns off. The CJ is a race manifold. A twin board throttle body or a monoblade throttle body will not drive the same as a stock throttle body. Yesterday's price is not, is today's, not today's price. price. If you want the best drivability ever, you keep the stock throttle body in there. If you want the most power potential ever, then you get a CJ with a twin bore or a mono. When you get a CJ, listen, everyone needs to listen. Everyone needs to listen to the following statement. When you consider a CJ manifold, you're basically taking drivability and going, that's not to say it's going to drive badly. I'm just saying, if you're installing a race race inspired manifold with a cold air that looks like an elephant dick and probably isn't shielded and a twin bore or monoblade throttle body and then complain that it doesn't idle like stock only stock drives like stock only stock drives like stock if you want your car to run stock like, put it back to stock. Matt 760 says, Hey, Alex, go on ESS kit. Already have my four innovations fuel system. Keep my CJ set up with a custom charge pipe or go ported boss or 18. Um, honestly, to make because it's boosted, Matt 760, you're going to have a lot easier time. And enjoy the drivability of a stock throttle body. But if you still want to keep some high RPM um, power potential, the boss intake does really well. Now, so does a ported 18 with IMRC lockouts. So in my opinion, it's a wash, right? 
the CJ, what I would have to do to tune your car on the CJ with the ESS kit is a little dance. Is it possible? Yes. Is it, is it, does it make that much more power than a ported 18 or a ported boss? No, I'm going to be honest with you. It really doesn't. It's blow through, right? It'll, it might make more at really high RPMs that we're probably going to be shifting your car 8,100, 8,200 with the CJ. We're going to be shifting your car at 78, 7,900 with the ESS and the 18 or boss. So I might be able to do it, but I, you'd be the, you'd be one of the first. And I don't know that your gains are going to be worth the potential hassle over uh, a stocked auto body. In my opinion, I need to find me a fair amount of Massachusetts. Does the Gen 2 Coyote have a gasket behind the oil cooler? I have a leak above around the filter, but not the filter. Yeah, I think it does have a, uh, yeah, it has to have a gasket behind the oil cooler. It has to. Pat the one says, Alex reads the long post like reading the bedtime story to a kid. Well done. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. It might have to, it might do some weird shit sometimes. There you go. There you go. That's why I went, Brett. That's why I went, Brett Barber Porter. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Don't get me started. Sometimes some of the names you guys say brings back PTSD. Are the gains from a CJ Manifold design? Are the gains from a CJ Manifold from the Manifold design or the larger throttle body or both? The reason I'm asking is if the gains are from the Manifold, why not adapt the stock throttle body? Then you're kind of choking it because if you look at the opening area of a CJ, it's a lot bigger than the stock throttle body is. So I think they both work together or it's better said that they both work together. Hey, Alex, getting a low fuel pressure code. Going to switch over to Detour 400 pump. Do I need a revision from you guys or I can just plug and go? Plug it in and go log it for us. If you don't have a, if you have an engage, I'm going to have to send you a R12 configuration file to send you because it has fuel pressure in the configuration. If you have an RTD, you, it already has fuel pressure in there and you can log it that way. Definitely has a gasket. Yes. For gen three, you need to lower car trans or get cow hood. Okay. Steve Schleckenberg. <laughs> what question is more annoying? Estimated horsepower. What mods run a certain ET estimated horsepower. Um, one of the, one of the, one of the more popular questions, Jimmy jams, people ask me is Alex, how much do you think my car is making? And if I was honest with people, they, if I was honest with people, they'd hate me. A six R 80 car shows low power compared to an MT 82 car, just due to the drivetrain loss, 15 to 20%, maybe more on a six R 80 car. My red car made 380 wheel, 380. After the 6F converter, Lucy Goosey converter, and the 373s install, but it went 11.2 at 120. So a lot of people don't like to hear low horsepower numbers. They want you to be optimistic, and I'd rather be a little on the low side. I'd rather uh, under deliver and over uh, under promise and over deliver than the opposite. So when someone says how much power do you think it makes, I go, well, most coyotes at 10 psi make about 650 wheel. That's what I say all the time. Most coyotes at 10 PSI make about 650 wheel, especially manuals, slightly lower number on autos. That's my standard number for everyone. So anytime they ask and they have a 3.6 pulley in a Vortec, 3.8 pulley on a Whipple, 82 millimeter on a 2.3, or a fucking 99 millimeter pulley on Odin, or, or, or I don't know, Thanos, uh, I say... It should be about 650 wheel, and uh, most coyotes on 10 psi and pump gas make about 650 wheel. What's the standard distance between the two, the stud wall studs in the house? Just put a third hole and wall trying to find one, says Mike Rasovic, whatever. What are the limits on the six rib Paxson for slip? I don't have a coyote, but have belts up with a Paxson LS7 at 750 wheel with the stock six rib setup. Chris Puchaya, I currently have a 12 psi pulley on the car, 347, but Vortex says that's a 10 PSI pulley, which is news to me because my car made 11 PSI with a 3.6 pulley. So I was kind of blown away that they said a 3.47 pulley is um, is is a 10 PSI pulley. What's up, little man? Little man in the house? Checking in. I like how he just stares people down. He looks into your soul. I think he just wants to play. He already pooped. I already pooped. <laughs> you see half his face. I already pooped. Uh, 48 inches from stud to stud. Avengers supercharger. I only use the 69 millimeter pulley. Thought on the grip tech pulleys. The grip tech pulleys work really well, especially if you don't want to go get a whole eight rib or 10 rib kit. Now, in my opinion, it's not something you should daily drive on, right? If you look at the grip tech pulleys, it has some funky knurling and some kind of coating on it. 
And it ends up, um, in my opinion, not really being belt happy or belt friendly. Not that it's going to kill the belt, but when you neural and put like funky coatings on, on some pulleys, um, you can cause premature wear. Now, I'm not saying they cause premature wear, but I'm saying just based on looking at it and based on experience, uh, you know, a smooth V, a matching V taper on the rib of the belt and the pulley can do pretty damn good up until big boost numbers. Now, if you don't want to upgrade to an eight rib and you want to make 12, 13, 14, 15 PSI, you can get a grip tech pulley, slap it on the track, do your thing, then take it off. Unless your car is just one of those cars that goes out only when it's time to get motherfuckers. JMS performance says I only use two millimeter pulleys. All the boost coyote says I'm so late. Alex helping a friend install an ESS G1 kit on a gen three. Any advice? No, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, what? Yeah. Uh, use good tools, drink plenty of water, follow the instructions. Uh, grip tech customer service is a one joe biden supercharger how the fuck do i take my engage out of the vent pod bought it like that you rip it out some psychopaths glued shit in they put um they put some kind of um rubber around the uh engage they shoved it in the center and it just kind of with 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 the ac getting it cold and then the out hot cold hot cold hot it just like cements itself in the bitch it in my opinion that's the worst part to ever worst place to ever 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 put your end gauge now the gauge mount chuck wazerski chuck wazerski has this thing that i showed you guys plenty of times and i'm just going to remind you and no he's not paying me to do this the gauge mount.com this is where you should mount your end gauge Right, you can get one with the YDBT logo. You can get one with whatever. I don't care. Um, what is this thing? Clock spring pass through, sure. But they have a gauge mount uh, logo. Uh, no vent. There you go. Look at it. logo color black or black. You can get a black one or a black one, and you can get one that has a gay ass coyote in it. You can get one that has my stupid logo on it, plain or nothing. But this is, in my opinion. The be this is where both of my Mustangs had. This is my red car right now. The new owner that's going to pay a thousand dollars less than I sold it for <laughs> for the car. This is what it looks like. My white one has that exact same thing, but in white. But in my opinion, this is the best place to mount it. You just pull on it, take it out, take it with you. It's really easy to mount. It's not that big of an install. It's kind of a nice little setup. So shout out to Chuck for getting that done. Um, what kind of pendejo? Does that shit to an engage? Oh, bro, most guys did that. Opinions on ported boss versus ported 18. I think it's a wash, Nick Levering. I think it's one of those things where the ported 18 manifold and the ported boss manifold for peak output is going to be similar. Most more people are going to buy the boss because it looks good, like it looks really good. Just know the shaft and forget the damn pulley. Damn, just get an SETX or tuner. The engage is old. <laughs> I mean, the engage is pretty much done. And he says the XCT X4 is old. <laughs> I mean, he says the SCT X4 tuner is new. Bro, that bitch is 10 years old easily. The fucking red car. What an abortion story. Could you imagine what that guy ended up doing? Said that the car was going to be built by him and his son. Then he tries to flip it. Says dad died. So for all I know, dad did die. And I'm not trying to make light of it. But it was just a cluster from the get. Can you guys name any tuning company Engage? Can you guys tune any tuning company Engage? Douche did it. If it's an H, there's either a Lund Racing Engage, an HP Tuners Engage, and then some other shit that we have nothing to do with. We can tune any HP Tuners. I'm sorry. We can tune any Lund Racing Engage as long as it is unlockable. Okay. It hasn't been fucked and fingered 500 times. If it's like in, you know, index five it, it, it's it's over i think you get about four unlocks in the thing but we have to send you the unlock if you buy an hp tuners engage that has never been tuned whether it be from competitor tunes or whatever but it's hp tuners and it has never been married to a vehicle we can tune it but if it has ever been married to any other vehicle it's a paperweight i've only answered that 15 times almost fell back for him now what goes around comes around. Exactly. I get it, bro. 
Did they take the dude's dad body out of the trunk on the red car? Yeah. Oof, easy R. Sucks that the red car is dealing with that. That car was a, that car doesn't deserve that kind of treatment. That was a good car. It does not deserve that kind of treatment. Man. EPA in the house. What's up, EPA? How's the cookie business? I wonder if you can unlock and engage with a paper clip. <laughs> How much power do I gain by porting my engage? Looks like I'm late. Chody Song. Does the red car still have the ghost cam tune? Yep. Unfortunately, I should have not sold it with an engage. I should have said, here's a regular idle pump gas tune. Get this thing out of my life. But the guy gave me a whole sob story. Oh, he was going to build it. Blah, 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 blah. And now it's got four tunes in it. Mm, I should have, I should have fucking taken all those tunes out of it and just left it with one. Fuck it. Um, his dad was dying to get his hands on the red car. <laughs> then he asked me about the truck. Are you going to sell the truck? And I'm like, not to you. I've got a luscious V of hair growing on my chest pubes down to my ball fro, says Dr. YouTube. Badass. Red car guy, bad. <laughs> Is the engine still limited to four to five unlocks, even if you're only using it for your own cars and not passing it around? Yep. Yep, you can't just like have 15 cars and use one engage. Just buy more engages or RTDs, bro. Does the engage work on older platforms? Um, I think it works on Cobras, but you need a different cable, if I'm not mistaken. My boy blocked me after I commented on his post. Guess his dad is a ghost watcher. He, he, I'm not giving away cookies today, guys. Am I giving away cookies? Hey, EPA, am I giving away cookies today or not? I don't am I giving away cookies? Because uh, EPA, let me know. Because I think I'm giving away cookies today, if I'm not mistaken. Let me know. I totally forgot if I'm giving away cookies. I have about 20 minutes to give away some cookies. And uh, you guys already used that line before about him being a ghost watcher. Wait, any of you guys want to explain the story with the new Red Cars owner? I don't want to ask Alex and look like a douche. Yeah, you guys explain it to him. I just don't care. Um, But I see what if, 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 if uh, EPA, I don't think I'm giving away cookies today. I don't think so. <laughs> I think I already gave all of them away. Jesus is still waiting for him to show up. <laughs> nope. No, no, no. EPA, we don't have to. We don't have <laughs> Oh, no, I got to choose. Now I'm going to hear all these dumb comments, dumb puns that people have been waiting for the cookies. <laughs> okay, guys, we're going to give away some cookies. <laughs> and you know what? We have a member. Remember Tony Full Bolt on that fucking homo? He got all salty. He's like all salty. He's trying to be like. He's literally Stan. He's not a fan. He hey, is. Mr. He's this guy. Right like, like legitimately this guy. Left. He's mad that I don't like suck his dick. And he's like, oh, yeah, maybe you and uh, you're going to give away more cookies like Stang mode. And you're going to. I'm just like, oh, my God, you're you're a sycophant. <laughs> Unbelievable. Oh, pass chat time. Yes. It has been six to 80 weeks. Yeah, 80 weeks, 80 weeks for the cookies. <laughs> cookies i want cookies in massachusetts give cookies to homeboy's dad oh my god stop it send cookies to homeland no no because look it has to be in the in the continental united states guys these guys that um don't my god cookies don't my god cookies underscore llc they're good people i'm not gonna go out there and just like make them ship cookies to kazakhstan or some shit i'm good um, but we could have been together, dude. He's he, dude, I feel sad for him. I feel sad. Like he gets, he can't help but comment on my shit. Can't help it. Can't help it. Who's tunes Stang Mode's car? Why no live? I don't know what he's talking about. I don't know. I don't know who tunes Homeboy's car. I literally don't watch anything like that. I'm going live in the chat for cookies. <laughs> uh, who tunes that? Oh, we got that drop an orange drimsicle cookie and I'll buy 10 immediately. Tony Fulbolt, I wanted a hug, man. I put my throttle body. Do I get a cookie? Oh boy, you guys. See, told you, told the EPA. Now they're gonna try really hard. Did he, did he email you that shit? What to? No, he didn't email it to me. Put it on the on the white car video doing sixty to one thirty. He's like, oh, now you're close to pro charger times. I'm like, boy, that's eleven psi. Relax, boy, that's eleven psi pump gas and boosting. Relax, kiddo. Uh, I'd rather get cookies than buy a subpar subpar at best hoodie for a chance to win a beaten down Stang. What I don't. What the fuck he's talking about? Oh my god. No, we <laughs> stop it. Uh, yeah, sending cookies to Ukraine would do as much as putting a profile picture about Ukraine's flag on your shit. Do you see those people that put don't get me wrong, what's going on in Ukraine's fucked up? None of it should really have nothing to do with it. It's not, not our shit, but whatever. And people are like, I support Ukraine, and I'm like, oh great, that Facebook fucking flag you put up, good for you, fucking dumbass. Did you send him a verbal tune? Free cookies beats buying 
grass boy could you imagine the only good thing about passenger side bumper exits is that you don't have to buy roofies for your date don't send cookies to leave it to bean or but well, that guy needs to go on a diet and probably run with his rig in his avatar oh my god svt snake going in on homeboy's weight sheesh god damn um it's car enthusiast says, uh, someone said another two. I don't like my name of them tuners, bro. Oh, this is Nestor. This is Nestor. Another tuners dyno said my car made 700 wheel horsepower, 500 wheel horsepower corrected because it was acting up. You told me my car should be making 600 wheel horsepower. Then I go gapping a 650 horsepower GTR and hanging on to a McLaren 600 LT. Your car is probably close to with that with that pro charger set up in it. It's probably like a 680, 6, but the 10R80 is kind of the equalizer, uh, Nestor. The 10R80 is kind of like the equalizer where it like just keeps it in the power band. Jake, Jake's truck, all he needs to make is about 750 wheel. And I don't think I can beat him unless I really, really pull it down and get a different head unit. Like uh, because I think the V3, you can overspin the slinger with a 3-3 pulley. I'm going to overspin the shit out of that slinger. I'm looking to overspin that motherfucker so much I break it. 3-3 three, three pulley on the way. Fuck it. But I get it, brother. You're beating GTRs in that nice uh, blue, lightning blue, lightning blue 10 or 80 car. Badass. Uh, so I tell my people my car makes 500 horsepower. So Tony Football can go, can go to hell and him and his chin tilt. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yo, I'll make a video of me eating a cookie in my Honda CRV. What's happening? Uh, you should give away dog treats for that dude that jerks off to dogs. Yes. I, you know what? We should give away the cookies that come in like sandwich bags. I'm fat. You're ugly. I'll go hit the gym. What the fuck are you going to do? <laughs> the only thing about passenger side bump breaks is you don't have to buy roofies for your day. That's the second time he said that. Does Coyote Fury really want the cookies that bad that he copy pastes his comment multiple times? It wasn't good the first time I wrote it. You know what I'm saying? Or the, the first time I read it. Um, Tesla Model S Plaid is more technically advanced than any Russian military hardware, ship, or plane. Shit. It's more technologically advanced than... Most U.S. shit. You should make a Tony cookie. Uh, look, that's up to them. Whatever they want to do. Not the dog bag again. Freedom cookies next on Clee. And you can see the views go fucking tanking once you start giving away cookies. How crazy is it to get an S197 down to 2,700 pounds? Well, I mean, it's possible, but you're literally cutting it up. No AC, carbon everything, front half the car, carbon doors, carbon trunk lid. I mean, it is, and, and no cage. And literally nothing but you and a milk crate in it. Like that guy on Instagram that raced somebody and he's like, yeah, beat that motherfucker. And I'm like, dude, your shit's gutted. It's not even a car anymore. I know a guy that works in the Tasca Mod Shop. Homeway gets Whipples in five weeks, he said. Hmm. I'm definitely better looking too. I'm all, I also ain't a cool on flavor to look at diet. Oh my God. Melissa says, I'm team cookies for Tony. Look, Melissa, you guys have free reign. If you want a Tony, you want to make a Tony cookie, you can mix the Uncle Dave with the fucking Cupid and call it the Tony cookie. Or you can make an Oreo cookie for inspired by Tony. You can do whatever you want. And as long as it's black and white, you can have it. The white S197 video you're talking about? I think so. It was like super gutted. It was on, on uh, Instagram. And it was some white boy, scruffy looking dude. Look like he's straight out of fucking, I don't know, deliverance. And he's like, yeah, dude, that's what I'm talking about. And I'm like, dude, that thing's gutted, gutted. What are you, what are you clapping about? That you unbolted shit? I don't get it. No dash. Exactly. Melissa's taking my suggestion. Exactly. We need FLKA and FJB cookie. No, look, we're not going to give sucker no shine. He's just a fucking punk and he just, he needs to go away. Tony Cookie needs to be a dog treat. Hey. But can you shape it in the in the shape of a dog treat, like a big bone? Hey, yo, not a dildo, a big bone. Marshmallow and the cookies for Tony, they already have that. I think they have a s'mores cookie, and they also have a Oreo cookie. As long as a Tony cookie doesn't taste like dog shit, <laughs> it has to have some peanut butter in it. Dogs love peanut butter. Did you hear the EPA is giving four innovations a hard time? Cody, where? Cody, where? Where is the EPA giving four innovations a hard time, bro? I seriously need to order some cookies now. My mouth is watering. Tony is a treat. Cream filled cookies. Yes, a lot of cream for Tony. Who in Central Florida do you recommend for a 10 or 80 clutch upgrade temp sensor bypass? 
Just take your trains out and send it to power by the hour, dude. Just take your trains out and send it to power by the hour. We thought about it, but didn't want Tony crapping all over the floor. <laughs> I'm not going to give him a cookie. No, he's not going to eat the cookie. You guys can just make a cookie under his name and go. And then put, if you want a picture of Tony, if you guys want a picture of Tony to highlight on your webpage, let me know. I'll take a picture of Tony and you guys will be good. I have a picture of Tony on my phone. That would be perfect because I'm gay. You know, this little, this man right here, come on. Could you imagine having a cookie with this little thing? On, come on, come on. Shit, that's my boy. We, um, oh my God, so many comments. Next four tech head unit bigger than a V3 SI maxed out minus 730 rural horsepower. No, you didn't. Do you have a JT? Now, weed, suck dick. Do you have a JT? I have a V3 JT. That makes, you make it like 800. You know what I mean? Uh, a J, uh, a V3, um, V7, sorry, a V7 JT, I think is the next size, next size up from a V3 JT. I think. I'm not sure. Someone says send it. Okay, I'll send it over to you guys. Um, I'll I'll try it. Give me your email so it doesn't lose resolution. So hit me up and um maybe on Instagram and I'll send you my email and then I'll send you a higher resolution photo of Tony. Send it for the label at least, exactly. Some guy in South Florida has spent a lot of money to get his car, 2,700 pounds, and the car only makes 460. For sure spent at least $10,000 on lightweight parts. That's so stupid. Just, I mean, you could have just put a, put boost in it and been done with it. Why does this cookie taste like semen? How do you know what semen tastes like? <laughs> Good job. That's very... <laughs> Tony Cookie should be complex. He gets them. No, V3 SI. Then the JT would be next. The V3 JT, I think, right? Melissa, I just ordered four of the other. Got a text saying that they would be here tomorrow, Carmel, Indiana. How do you get a text? God damn. Tony's picture has to have the crackhead eyes. Did you see the post about five of Whipple besides their 3.8? Holy fucking hell. Yes. Everyone, I'm ordering a 3D, 3D, oh my God, cookies. What do you recommend? Chocolate never hurts. Bro, you can't go wrong with any of them. They're badass. Do oh my God, cookies. Will Tony cookie come with come with a plastic bag? It got kind of does already come in a plastic bag. Filling tastes a little salty. <laughs> Who would have ever thought we would be worried about our car parts? Imagine four innovations getting hit up about EPA stuff. Like, what the fuck are we doing? There, it's fuel system parts. It's delivering the fuel efficiently to the car. What what are emissions? Oh my god, get the fuck out of here with that bullshit. Um, well, that backfired really quickly on Zane. Alex, I want to donate my BAP to the channel. It's a Vortex Faxel unit. I never really used. Hey man, send it to Power by the Hour, and I'll do a bundle giveaway. I have a set of ARP bolts that I gotta give away. I got um the BAP, and I got I can buy stuff to give away. I just haven't really had time. It, it, did Ortiz performance pay two beaners to go in here and say shit? They go, hey, put a pinch in Go in there and go in there and spam Ortiz performance. Go in there and spam Ortiz performance. He's gonna say Ortiz performance, and we're gonna we're gonna cut it out and put it on Instagram. Oh, fucking weirdo. When's the next TDC live stream tomorrow, eight o'clock? Uh, that's like wheel companies getting hit up by the EPA. That is such a weird thing. That's a that's a that's a weird thing to hit up. Like, what is their basis for hitting up a fuel system company? My God, my God, my God. Um, next race is my buddy's 580 horse C6 Zeos. You're gonna fuck him up. Hey, Nestor, he dude, you're gonna fuck. No, no, you're gonna fuck him up. He's gonna be so pissed. On the 2-3, you're going to put a car on him. And on the 3-4, you're going to put another car on him. You're going to fuck him up. Alex, have you seen any of the new Apex headsets and rod bolts? Nope, sure haven't because I am not an engine builder. Um, <laughs> Damn, Reynaldo Delgado talking that shit. <laughs> He's probably a good guy, but usually the customers are the ones that are trying to spam and they, they, try, to try, they try some shit. It's good stuff. Um. I think EPA has been given free range since the Democrats are pushing electric cars down our throats. Yeah. Keep voting. You guys got what you wanted. Whoever on this chat, uh, there's 400 people right now on the chat, whoever voted in, in, for Democrat at all and are not happy with the gas prices, don't blame it on Ukraine. The gas went up before Ukraine. Stop that shit. And um, the EPA stuff, 
Did you got what you, you got what you voted for? You got what you voted for. I watched Horsepower TV build the coyote. It was pretty good. Setting that camp timing is a bitch. Mini by Bad Matt. It was full of misinformation. They said they made 800 horsepower on pump gas on that car. I repeat, they said they made 800 horsepower or 600 horsepower on pump gas. I laughed so hard. Man, Cal Mercedes 3, almost done. Can't wait to get it out. I voted for Poppy Trump. Love that guy. What's up, Alex? Still grinding. I see. Uh, hope all is well. Colton already get, get to work. I love it. Um, Just ordered some cookies. Good. I like that. I like when my fans get on this channel and Melissa and EPA Lake uh, get on and you guys just supported the channel. And not only that, the cookies are legit. Forget the fact that they support the channel. The cookies are legit. And you guys start ordering. Like, you guys keep them fucking busy. And I appreciate you guys for doing that. I was going to get Tommy Lawrence to sit on this bitch because she bought that cookie. Do you know what I'm saying? Uh, 800 butthole horsepower. Exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, it was crank horsepower, so it was from the back of their necks. I mean, seriously. When I saw them post 800 horsepower, I'm like, here we go. Every coyote owner is going to go. I want that combo. I'm like, oh, my God. Stop it. Stop it. Um, hey, EPA, you better go talk to Russia about the pollution they're making. Yeah, EPA, go over there and knock on Putin's door and say, hey, could you stop all these bombs? Because it's really fucking up. Agaya. It's James Lake. Your name's Lake. You're staying Lake. It's EPA with some redheaded chick on your shit. You're Lake. <laughs> I bet you their website's getting exploded right now with cookie orders, but that's what we want. Lake. <laughs> Melissa Lake. <laughs> and, and, and Lake Lake. <laughs> Greetings from Maui, Hawaii, John. Um, I would have ordered for myself, but can't get them shipped to Canada. Dang, that sucks. Well, they ship the cookies to the 956 EZR. EZR, are you in the 956? Izzy, are you in the 956? Like for real. Putin will put his size four boot up the EPA's ass. Did you see where Elon Musk challenged Putin to a fight for Ukraine? Isn't Putin a black belt judo motherfucker? Like, he has a fighting background. Yeah, he might be a sawed-off prick, but doesn't he have a fighting background? Crazy. And he was an ex-fucking KGB. Elon, you would get... He would put you in a position where he can stick his finger in your butt at will, and you couldn't do shit about it. 2018 F-150, 5 65,000 miles, and I'm just now starting to get the phaser dropout issue. Yep. Usually it takes a little bit, but it always happens. Yep. Chocolate, sea salt, campfire, and double D coming up. Thursday, YDBT chocolate sea salt. Oh, got it, YDBT chocolate sea salt. Gas had been going up since day one with his dumb ass. Izzy says, yes, I'm in the 956. Moved from the Northeast eight years ago. Why the fuck did you go to the 956? That's what I don't understand. They push this environment crap. Meanwhile, Russia is dropping bombs like in Elon is launching rockets. It is very weird. They'll ship the motherfuckers anywhere. You're paying from. Eliza says, I can always get cookies for special occasions. Oh, my God, it's hard. Not to stuff type mouth with these cookies. What the fuck is he saying? Elon is Elon has to challenge him old Western style. Putin has lost black belt with the sanctions. Oh no, the black belt's gone. Oh no. I mean, any car that you gut the fuck out of it can be fast. Just like Roy from Ortiz went 10-6, tune only, stock stall. I mean, yeah, if it's gutted, there you go. I get that 100%. Nothing wrong with a finger in the butt, says Brad Smith. Hi, Alex. Long time no see, my friend, says Khalid. I love Mazimi. I've never seen you in my life. Putin's ex-KGB, he would ram his hand up Elon's ass and use him as a sock puppet. Elon, I love you. You're great. You're a genius. When it comes to physical stuff, shut the fuck up. I put my money on Putin all day to put his finger in your ass all day. Um, those rockets Elon launches run on kerosene. I do own a Starlink. It's pretty badass. Can we get all the clips at the end? Okay, we'll get the clips at the end. That's a lot of clips. And we got uh, best bang for the buck, 800 horsepower, F5, uh, Gen 3 setup. Look, 800 rubble horsepower. You can do it with an Odin, a Whipple, or, an, or a Vortec. It doesn't really matter. Now, Quitsuck Dick says, I pay for a pay-per-view Elon versus Putin. Me too. I would absolutely do it. All right, Izzy R. Izzy R, because you're in the puro pinche 956 a la verga cut, you get the cookies. So I want uh, Melissa and Lake Lake to uh, get uh, get in touch with Mr. Izzy R. Izzy R, go to Instagram, dole my God cookies underscore LLC, and you will get 
cookies. I don't know if it's three or two or one, but I want to see some of these cookies in the puro pinche 956 a la verga. Puro pinche 956 a la verga. There you go. Izzy R, congratulations on winning the cookies. Okay, let's end the show with every single fucking drop I got. And we say bye-bye. There we go. Get the fuck out of here because I'm, I'm going to fuck you out right now, motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Heavy duty. Heavy duty. You can't touch me. You're not man enough. I eat your ass all alive, you bitch. Fuck you, you hoe. Come and in my face. Fuck you, ass for everybody. My nigga. <laughs> it's over, Johnny. It's over. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. Oh, the GT500. Oh. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, no. We suck again. That's home. Hey, 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 hey. Don't rub on that. You blocked that. You understand? That's alpaca. That's $25,000 alpaca. You blocked that shit. You don't rub Put the club soda on there. <laughs> That's the five liter Whipple. Oh no! I already got that. Okay. Dylan, you son of a bitch. <laughs> Dear mister, I'm too good to call and write my This is Tony Bolton song. This will be the last package I ever send your ass. <laughs> Got some diarrhea. Puro pinche 956 a la verga. Cut. Puro pinche 956 a la verga. Cut. Not that guy. I'm not that guy, pal. Trust me. You're not that guy. Got a baby milk. The baby has been able to latch, but I've not been able to produce any milk. But okay. Stupid. <laughs> Check this out. Oh, you're okay, coming a little too far. Uh, oh. <laughs> What it is, ho? Oh, what's up? Uh... Hell, Captain Trackhawks. They got Timmy yeah. on the turn up in the blast off. He wouldn't got out for that body, took his mask off. Yesterday's price is not today's price. Yesterday's price is not today's price. <laughs> He's certified. He's certified. He was up and down on his shaft and stuck the head at the same time. <laughs> Now, ladies, remember, grapefruit is also a fat burner, so you actually losing weight while you sucking his dick. Excuse me. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it, and we'll do it live. <laughs> Fucking thing sucks. Right. Fucking thing yeah. sucks. Where do you go from here, Mike? I don't know, man. I might just fade into Bolivian. You know what I mean? Um, I don't have nowhere to go and nothing to do. You know what I mean? I just go find my pigeons on the roof in New York. Do not come. Do not come. I'm gonna come. <laughs> This one. Oh, that's a thinking one. That's stupid. And this is some applause. And then when they got hit him up. I ain't Suck got it. no motherfucker. That's why I fuck your bitch, you fat motherfucker. <laughs> West side. Oh, motherfucker. that's when I'm feeling talking some shit and getting into some beef with people. All right, guys. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you very much for everyone that joined in and everyone that gave money. We got John Lund. We got Daniel Green. We got a bunch of other people that gave money. I appreciate you guys for donate, donating on the channel. I will not be on this channel tomorrow. I will be on tomorrow, that dating channel, 8 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. We're going to talk some shit, talk dating life, life advice, bullshit, maybe do some call and stuff so you guys can give us some uh, some of the stories or you know, I'll obviously come up with subject matter before the show. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you guys tomorrow for the other channel. If not, I'll see the rest of you Thursday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, another YDBT Daily. See you guys later.